cancer. And he was convinced it was a virus. Now, why, why would Rife begin looking for a viral link? The reason is, is that viruses, unlike parasites or bacteria or mold or fungus, viruses are not living organisms. Not as we think of something that's alive. A viron or a virus doesn't breathe, it doesn't reproduce by itself, doesn't poop. It, it's, it's basically, it's got about three components. Inside it's got its genetic material, its instructions, and then it's got a capsin, and then it's got what's called an envelope. And it's like an egg, so it's got a yolk, and it's got an exterior layer. And what a virus does is it, it finds the keyholes of your cells, so if we get a, a viral infection, it finds those keyholes and it locks in and it waits for the cell to absorb it. And once it's absorbed inside, it releases its genetic instructions to the cell, your cell's manufacturing system. And uh, then the cell begins manufacturing more virons. Interesting. And as they begin to multiply, eventually they burst their way out of the cell and they, they move on to other cells and they repeat that process over and over again. Now fortunately the immune system in most cases can see that this is a foreign object and it'll clean up these viruses before they reach the point of causing death. Now HIV virus is very good at concealing himself, itself because what's interesting about viruses and this is like once again what, what Reif was looking at is possibly a cause of cancer is it Viruses, before they leave the cell, they steal the protein or they steal some of the information from the cell to cloak itself, to make itself look like it's part of that organism so that the immune system can't see it. So the best analogy I can use, this is what a virus would be like. Uh, we have an automobile plant. They build cars. They shut down for the evening. Uh, during the night, an individual breaks in and he reprograms their computers at night and they're not going to build cars anymore. All these robots are now going to build bicycles. And so for the entire evening, bicycles are built to the point that the, the, uh, the robots and all of the, the manufacturing processes finally collapse in destruction. But before the man leaves the plant, he steals the identification, social security numbers, the clothing, everything he can find from the employees, supervisors, and owners, and he cloaks himself and his crew with these things. And then he walks out of the plant and he sets it on fire. And when the cops show up to see what happened, there they stand, and they look like plant owners, plant workers, but these are the people that actually were involved in the destruction of that plant. And if you look behind them, there's all their bicycles. Or they have new friends. See, this is what a virus is like. And here again, HIV virus, which is called AIDS, it cloaks itself so well that the immune system has trouble seeing it. And so that HIV virus, it'll actually go right into the precincts of the body, into the white cells and it destroys them and when it leaves it dresses itself as cops <laughs> so the immune system is totally confused of what's going on see with with an hiv virus now when you think about cancer what what rife was thinking about was this that a cancer cell is a healthy cell that has had its genetics altered something has changed and as a pathologist, he only, only knew of one type of organism or critter or whatever you want to call it. We call it viruses. That's what he called them, virons, viruses, that could overwrite instructions. That's why he began looking for a viral link. 20,000 times he got samples of cancer from the hospital and he couldn't find it. And so you can imagine the time involved. And then he ran into a man named Kendall. And Dr. Kendall said, I can grow cancer. They begin having a discussion. And Rife looked at him. He said, well, if, if you can grow it, he says, I can see it. And so they teamed up. And this was called the Kendall median, is what it was called. 
because what Kendall had discovered that, that by putting cancer cells into an acidic environment, a low pH environment, that cancer would reproduce and replicate much faster. And what Reif had been doing 20,000 times was taking his samples and putting them into a neutral pH, probably with 7, 7.3. And by the time he fit, was, was digging down for something that he could find, it wasn't there anymore. And so what Reif discovered early on working with Kendall was this is that the terrain or the pH levels of the human body will affect whether cancer is there in many cases or cannot be seen there at all. So Reif named the first virus the BX virus. Later on he identified a BY virus and he would extract these viruses and here again this is still available on film and he would actually inject these into his laboratory rats over 200 times he was able to demonstrate tumor growth and there's film of tumors the size of golf balls on these animals and then he would re-extract the cancer from that tumor and he would apply his frequency machine to the virus that he would put under his microscope, find the correct frequency, then treat the, the, the laboratory rats, and their cancer would go on remission. And this is how he demonstrated what he was trying to do. And so later on, around 1934, other people were getting involved with Rife, uh, other doctors, some of the, the leading doctors of the time were, were, were now associating with him, looking at his work, uh, Dr. Milbank Johnson was the most notable of, of that day, well known throughout the country. And he arranged for a study from the University of Southern California to send 16 cancer patients to a ranch in order to test out Rife's theories about using a frequency-based device to agitate the viral link to cancer to see if their cancer would go into remission. Now what's interesting, and this is on audio tape, a few years ago audio tapes were discovered, I think they were discovered up in Canada. And uh, on those tapes you could hear Reif talking about pH levels. And he made the comment that if they did not elevate the pH levels of those 16 studies, that he would get nowhere. Because what he realized was this, that in the right terrain, cancer could replicate itself faster than he could destroy it. Now what else is interesting about Reif when he was looking through his microscope he discovered something else and it's called pleomorphism. Now in the world around us, the visible world, we may see a, a caterpillar become a butterfly. But what Reif saw, depending on the terrain or the pH levels or the toxins that were in his samples, is that not only would he see caterpillars eventually grow into butterflies, he would see butterflies revert back to caterpillars. So what he began to understand was, is that cancer is developed not just by the virus itself, but by the terrain that it's growing in. What Reif understood back in the 1930s, once he made these discoveries, is that cancer was a symptom of other problems. And if you treated just the symptoms, you would not eradicate the cancer. You may appear to put it in remission. You may uh, appear that you're getting tumor shrinkage. But in reality, cancer is a symptom could be a symptom of a problem with pH, could be a symptom of toxicity, he knew that. It could be a symptom of some blockages within the body itself that's causing toxic buildup. And so this is something that was not understood well by most people. Now after that study, a man named Morris Fishbean, who was connected with the AMA, uh, tried to buy out Reif and his ideas, so he made him a monetary offer and Reif refused. He was not interested in money for his research.